Okay, okay, we are live. Okay. Uh, so yeah, first of all, hello everyone and welcome to the AWS User Group Dehradun YouTube channel. And today we have with us Mr. Donny Praposo. He is a software engineer, self-proclaimed barista, cafe racer enthusiast, and senior developer advocate at AWS. With more than 16 years of experience in technology industry, from telecommunication banking to startups, he is now focusing on helping developers to understand varieties of technology to transform their ideas into execution. He loves coffee and any discussions on any topic from microservices to AI and ML. Yeah, so that's all. Uh, I really want to thank Donnie uh, for being present here with us today. And yeah, just that. Over to you, Donnie. Thank you so much, Yakshu. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, thank you also, Saksham, and also Saurav. I'm super happy to be here. How's Thanks. everyone doing? We are, we are good, Donny. How are you? Oh, I'm Hope good, I'm good. I'm there. super excited, uh, Saksham. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, we do. <laughs> okay, so let me start this session. Okay, so... Um, Hello, good afternoon, Deradun. Hope all of you are doing well and staying safe. And hopefully I pronounce Deradun right, okay? Because I had a little practice with Sosham and also Yakshu uh, in the beginning. <laughs> Anyways, I'm super delighted to be here and share with all of you about Deep Razor. And uh, this session is structured to help you get started with AWS Deep Razor. So by the end of the session, what I really hope is for you to have some understanding of what reinforcement learning is and how easy it is to get started with reinforcement learning and start and train your own deep pressure model. So you can take part in one of the deep pressure league or going out and creating your own community race. I mean, probably for AWS user group that I do. Okay. So just to set the expectation level, uh, this is a session with level between 100 and 200. Uh, and that means that the session is perfectly fits if you're just getting started with the pressor. or even uh, for you who have crafted your reward function and looking for extra tips and tricks to improve your model. And before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Donny Prakoso. I am a senior developer advocate for AWS, uh, covering for ASEAN region. I started my professional experience as a software engineer uh, R&D manager and CTO for several startups. I'm um, specialized in microservices, even driven architecture and also machine learning as I was in various projects involving those aspects while I was in banking and telco industry. So if you have any questions to microservices or even machine learning, feel free to drop me a message on LinkedIn and Twitter. Oh, and also uh, don't forget to uh, visit my YouTube channel. Uh, the link is on the screen, uh, which just released like a month ago. Okay, so this is how we structure our session for today. We will start by talking about the origin of Deep Razor and a few components that you need to know. Then we will shift our discussions to reinforcement learning. We will cover an overview of reinforcement learning, a uh, few terminologies uh, that we will use uh, and how reinforcement learning works in Deep Razor. Uh, we will also guide you on how to build your first reinforcement learning model for deep racer. Uh, so because I'm going to go a step-by-step -step console walkthrough together with you. And that's why we are also going to do some hands-on lab to help you get started and run your first AWS deep racer model in no time. So what I like to suggest is that due to the constraint of time, if you have your AWS account ready and you want to uh, uh, familiarize yourself with AWS Deep Reserve, uh, console, dashboard, uh, how to build a vehicle and craft your reward functions. You can uh, follow my uh, demo because I'm going to do walkthrough. I'm going to give it some time for you to be able to follow me. Okay. Um, and exclusively for this session, I'm going to share a few tips to improve your reward function. And during the session, I'm also going to check if there's any questions from you in the YouTube chat, okay? Oh, I see one's coming from Mahas. Welcome, Donny. Welcome, Mahas. Super delighted to be here. Okay, so uh, probably some of you might already have a big idea on what AWS Deep Racer is. So AWS Deep Racer is a 118 scale robotic car, which gives you an exciting and fun way to get started with reinforcement learning by applying it to autonomous racing. So AWS uh, Deep Racer uh, is, was launched in 2018 uh, to get developer hands-on with machine learning. 
Now, what you see on the screen is AWS Depressor Evo, which is the second generation in autonomous racing. Um, so, yeah, I mentioned that Evo is the second iteration of Depressor. Previously, we have the original Depressor, which only has a monocam without LiDAR sensors. I'm going to talk about that later on. Don't worry about it. And since its launch, AWS Depressor has enabled tens of thousands of developers globally to learn and get hands-on with reinforcement learning. And one of the re reasons why Depressor has become successful is that to get started with the complexities of machine learning, we need to learn by doing. And hands-on learning is the easiest way to understand the concept, a foundation to implementation. Beside Depressor, AWS also launched uh, DeepLens uh, to help you get started with computer vision, uh, like this one that I have. This is a deep lens. Uh, and also a deep composer uh, to help you get started with generative AI. And this is how it looks like. This is a keyboard that you can use to um, make music with AWS Deep Composer. But, but those are a story for other day. Okay, so in a nutshell, um, uh, AWS Deep Reason is an integrated learning system to help developers uh, from any level to understand reinforcement learning and how to apply it. There are four components in AWS Depressor. Uh, the first one is AWS Depressor Evo. Uh, Depressor Evo expands the learning and tracing with new sensors that enable it to detect objects. And AWS have swapped uh, out the single camera, uh, single camera and putting in a stereo camera and a light detection and ranging sensor or known as LiDAR sensors. And these sensors unlock new possibilities and resulting in new race formats. They are head-to-head -head, uh, object avoidance in addition of time trial. The second element is a 3D racing simulator that you can find in the AWS Depressor console. So I'd like to emphasize that you don't have to wait your physical Depressor to start learning. You don't need to buy any physical AWS Depressor device to start learning. You can start now in the AWS console. The 3D simulator in the AWS console is where the building takes place. And it's really your starting point to build your machine learning skill for uh, building machine learning models. And once that you have that kind of confidence, you can then showcase your model during any race competition, which is a good segue for me to the next component, which is AWS Depressor Lake. Now, you can build your own AWS Depressor models to get ready for racing in AWS Depressor League. And you can also build models to race against friends and colleagues using the new community race feature. Okay. So those four, those four are the components in AWS Depressor. And I just want to reiterate because I got these questions um, quite a lot uh, from developers that you can actually start learning right now by logging into AWS Depressor console. You don't need to have the physical device, okay? And um, we need to lay a foundation first before we can start building our model. So uh, let's quickly cover the basics of reinforcement learning. Machine learning has three main categories. Um, let's uh, start with the supervised learning. With supervised learning, we can build a model to predict a value or to classify data. Models are trained using large amounts of curated training data with labels. Now, uh, the second uh, approach is unsupervised learning and things are a bit different with unsupervised learning. In unsupervised learning, models are trained to identify similarities in large amounts of data to aid classification. The uh, one of the most significant difference with supervised learning is that the training data in unsupervised learning doesn't need to have explicit labels. And lastly, with reinforcement learning, uh, with reinforcement learning, we finally can build a model to autonomously predict which decisions to make in a specific environment. The models are trained in a simulated environment where the models can interact with the environment and learn based on the outcome of action, if an action was good or bad. Okay, so that was a quick overview for three main categories in machine learning. And let's get into a concrete example to illustrate how reinforcement learning works. 
uh, essentially, reinforcement learning is built on an idea of reward and penalty. Reward and penalty. So think about our approach used to train our pet. We give cookies for good behavior and no cookies for bad behavior. That's simple. And during this training, we instruct our pet with simple actions like sit or stay or roll or even more complicated actions. The goal of this game, um, uh, this training game, of course, is for your pet to behave like what you want them to be. And from training our pet as an example, let's dive deeper into reinforcement learning by understanding a few terminologies. Um, to be more detailed, reinforcement learning is a machine learning technique that enables an agent to learn in an interactive real-time environment by doing trial and error using feedback in the form of rewards from its own action. Now, within this simulator, we have an agent that acts autonomously in the given environments to reach a specific goal. So in the context of AWS Deep Racer, the agent is the AWS Deep Racer vehicle. And what is the goal of the agent? The goal is to finish a lap around the track. The environment is the surrounding area for our agent to interact. In this case, the environment is the track that we design with AWS RoboMaker. You don't need to worry about it because everything already been configured by AWS Deep Grazer. Um, the next uh, terminology that we need to understand is the state. The state is defined by the current position within the environment. And basically, this is what the agent can see through its camera. Uh, the action can be defined with how fast or how slow the agent decides to run, and it could also be including the direction. Uh, for every state, our agent needs to take an action to try and achieve its goal uh, of making a lap. And depending on which action it takes, it will be given a reward. If the chosen action gets the agent closer to the goal, you can reinforce this action in future by providing a positive reward or otherwise discourage it with either a negative reward or no reward at all. Now, this kind of reward is provided by the environment itself and specified, uh, specified through a reward function. And uh, the reward function is code uh, written to incentivize behavior through parameters defined by the creator of the environment. And the last concept here is an episode uh, on the right side. Uh, this is the, the, the last concept, which represents its iteration where an agent goes from the start position to a termination state. And a termination state means if the agent drives off the track or finishes a lap around the track. Okay? So I know this, there's so many things that you need to understand in the beginning, but these, uh, I promise you that these are the, the main terminologies that you need to understand about reinforcement learning. Okay, so yeah, so those are the terms that we need to know uh, so we can fully understand the whole concept of reinforcement learning in AWS Deep Razor. Um, so let me, uh, let me simplify it for you. We have an agent which interacts by doing some actions within the environment and it will be rewarded depending on how close or far from the goal. Okay, so that is my simplified version. I hope it helps you to understand the correlation between all of these elements. Now I mentioned about the reward function. Yep. So, um, so reward function is the most crucial component to help us crafting the reward. Now the reward function incentivizes uh, particular behaviors, and it, it it is the core of reinforcement learning. And to run your AWS Deep Racer car, providing a reward function will be your most important job. We're going to cover this later on, but uh, from this point, I think you really need to understand that the reward function is really the heart of reinforcement learning. So let's look at this race grid to see a practical example of a reward function. And it's uh, in, in this illustration, each square is a state and the green square is the starting position. And the finish line is the goal or, terminate, uh, or terminal state. And we design the squares at the edge of the tracks as the terminal state. I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but this is, oh yeah. So this is the terminal state. 
which will tell the vehicle that it has gone off the track and failed. A reward function is a function to help your agent to determine if the action it just took was good or was it bad based on the outcome of the action. And uh, to simply put, the reward function is a logic that looks at the next state that the agent is in and based on that assigns a reward. The reward function can be seen as the logic that will incentivize the driving behavior you want your agents to learn. How will you incentivize the agent to drive on the yellow center line? That is the main question in this illustration. Right? So we can do that by assigning a higher reward to the center line. Uh, and that means that the model will learn that the actions that drive on the center line, you can see uh, the, the yellow line or the orange line um, on the center. Uh, it, uh, if the agent drive through those states, it will get higher reward than the actions that leads to the sites. Now, in the beginning, our agent will not have any idea of the failure of landing in a state or the reward associated with an action. So it first needs to explore the environment and then explore some more in an interactive fashion to build up this knowledge. And our model start off not knowing anything about the reward for specific actions and then repeatedly explores the grid until it moves out of bounds or reaches the destination before it starts again. And that means that the model that we have is learning through iteration. As it drives around, the vehicle accumulates rewards from the scores that we have defined in the reward function. And before uh, recording uh, each step, it is also learning what rewards the various actions from a specific state leads to. All steps uh, from start to going off track or the finish is called an episode. Okay. Now to get the best model, the agent first uh, need to explore the grid uh, to ensure it covers large rewards that can drastically change the, uh, the driving behavior. And this is normal and we call it exploration. So first the agent needs to explore to see uh, what rewards can be obtained from various actions tried in various states. It won't settle for the first best thing. It will first explore. Now, as the agents gains more, tr uh, uh, gains more experience uh, through the exploration and iteration, it starts learning where it gets repeatedly gets higher rewards it then starts exploring uh, less and moving on to exploiting what it has learned. Right. So we have exploration and we also have exploitation. Now, the next thing that you need to understand is about convergence. And convergence happens when a model starts repeatedly picking specific actions depending on the state it is in. As the model continues training, uh, the actions from each state don't change anymore. Now, the model is optimizing for expected cumulative return and the model performance will be the same repeatedly with subsequent updates to the model not really changing the model behavior. But there is a trade-off between exploration and exploitation which you need to configure with the hyperparameter. The, the, the challenge is that if you explore too much, your model may take a very long time to converge. If you exploit too soon, your model may not find the best driving behavior and potentially also fail to converge. Okay, so that's the uh, concept of exploration and exploitation in reinforcement learning. Now let's get back to the previous grid. Um, what we have here is a small grid and our agent can easily go to its square and test all actions to determine which action will result in the highest expected cumulative reward, assuming only assuming that in each subsequent square, it will choose the action with the highest expected cumulative return. This mapping where we know the value of being in the square, like two, like 0 0.2, is called a value function. Once that we know the value of a state, we simply choose an action that takes us to the highest value. Now, if you can map a state directly to an action, then you have a policy function and the model is sometimes called a policy network. 
the idea of knowing how valuable it is to be in a state is a very important concept. Uh, the value of being in a state can be seen as the expected cumulative reward that can be achieved from that state onwards if the agent keeps following the optimal policy. Okay? Okay, so let's recap what we have discussed about reinforcement learning in AWS DeepReason. Um, reinforcement learning being a form of machine learning where we are interested in creating a model that can learn how to make autonomous decisions in an environment based on the rewards that it receives when it interacts with the environment. Reinforcement learning uh, in the real world is like training your pet to behave using cookies as rewards. The reward function is the logic that incentivizes our model to learn the driving behavior we want the model to do. And taking an example in a grid world, our agent first explores the environment to learn what rewards can be achieved from each state based on various actions and the reward function is the logic that assigns a reward based on the outcome of each action. It uses the um, these interactions to build a map of the value of being in each state. The value of being in each state is the expected cumulative reward that can be achieved from that state onwards when following the optimal policy. Right. And then the next question is, but how does the deep reason agent learn? Uh, in deep reason, uh, the our agent is the car. We already uh, passed that and it interacts with the simulated racetrack environment during the training. In the simulator, AWS DeepRacer drives around the track, taking pictures with its lens about 15 uh, frames per second. That picture is the state. And for each picture, DeepRacer will take an action and end up in a new state. And this is called a step. Uh, DeepRacer has stereo cameras and LiDAR, so it has a more in-depth view of its states and can sense objects too. And DeepRacer will collect experience uh, like the state, uh, action, reward, um, uh, next uh, state, tuples, and all steps from the starting point until it reaches terminal state. And that is called an episode. Okay. And once the agent has collected experience, which you need to specify in hyperparameters, it starts updating and training its model. The goal during training is to figure out which action in which states will lead to the maximum cumulative expected rewards. And once the model is trained, it is sent back to the agent to collect more experience. And as for the exploration and exploitation, once again, it's controlled to the model hyperparameters. However, now here's the challenge. Unlike the grid race that we have discussed previously, deep reason it cannot explore all states in this simulator. It will be uh, impossible or it's going to be taking too long just to get the value for um, uh, for each states, right? So the challenge now is that we cannot fully determine the value of ending up in each state. The next question would be is that how do we select the action if we don't know the value of the states? The answer is approximation. Now, this is commonly referred to as a policy optimization, which means that we optimize the policy function, mapping state to action in order to achieve our goal. Now, so let's look uh, at common method of doing policy approximation, uh, approximation using a method called a vanilla uh, gradient ascent. Oh. Okay. Apology for this. Okay, so um where were we? Oh yeah, so one method that we can do approximation is a, using a method called vanilla gradient ascent. Now um the next thing that I want to discuss with you is that how AWS built AWS DeepRacer. So this is going to be like, a uh, we're going to dive deeper into the architecture. So you will understand what kind of services that AWS DeepRacer uses. Um, AWS DeepRacer is built on top of various AWS services. And Amazon SageMaker trains the model. 
and the best RoboMaker provides the simulation environment. Amazon S3 stores the model, Amazon CloudWatch stores the log, and Amazon Kinesis Video Stream displays the video in the console. So when you start training a model in AWS DeepRacer, this is what's going to happen. Um, AWS DeepRacer will start an Amazon SageMaker and AWS RoboMaker container in your Surface account and links the two. It then passes the right parameters to start the training. The experience tuple, which is the state, action, new state, uh, reward, are generated in AWS RoboMaker because it has the environment. After a specified amount of experience, which is defined by the hyperparameters, it is sent back to Amazon SageMaker to train the model. The new model is then sent back to AWS RoboMaker to get more experience, and then the process continues. The output models, uh, video, and metrics, they are stored in other AWS services such as Amazon S3, uh, CloudWatch, and Kinesis Video Stream. Now, once that you have your model ready, uh, you can download and plug into your uh, DeepRacer device if you have that kind of device, but just want to reiterate again that you don't need to have the device to start learning uh, reinforcement learning. You can um, just use the console. And uh, I just want to uh, let you know about the uh, the hardware uh, part of DeepRacer. DeepRacer is powered by Intel OpenVINO to enable model optimization for fast inference on the edge. So on the device itself is being, uh, it, we use Intel OpenVINO so it could make a fast inferential uh, on the edge. Yeah. Oh, now it's the demo time. Hopefully that you have, uh, if you want to follow me along, that would be a good thing. Uh, let me know on the chat if you uh, if you don't have any AWS account, that is fine. Uh, but what we're going to do here is I'm going to guide you on how that you can build your first model and also craft your reward function. Now, um, so uh, this is the uh, AWS management console that we have, right? Um, okay, this one, yeah, correct. So, uh, if you are decided to follow me along, uh, please be noticed that we are not going to create any model uh, in this session. What I'm going to show you is a few elements to, that are important for you to put your focus on so you can build, train, and tune your models on your own. All right, let's do this. First thing first, that you need to open your AWS console and find AWS DeepRacer. Now, uh, DeepRacer is only available in North Virginia, uh, so make sure you are, you are in the right region. Yeah. So uh, here we are at the DeepRacer dashboard. Uh, as you can see, there are a few links, including the video to help you get started and participate at AWS DeepRacer League. And also, once again, make sure you are in the US East 1 region. So if you're pretty new to uh, Deep Research League, you can find a few links on this page. Um, and they are really um, uh, useful for you if you want to dive deeper and gain more understanding about how Deep Research and Reinforcement Learning works. On this page, uh, you will see that there are a few uh, virtual races happening with different racing formats. Uh, you can see that we have time trial, we have a head to head, but using bot and also uh, object avoidance. And what I suggest is that uh, keep your eyes on this page as we are rolling out new virtual league throughout the year. The next thing that I would like to show you is this. Uh... Oh, yeah, we are ready, Aditya. Yes. That's why I'm here to share with you to transfer all my knowledge to you, so you can build the most uh, uh, the most uh, magnificent models and can uh, so you can win the deep Racer league. Okay, so uh, returning to the deep Racer dashboard, um, I want to highlight this feature, which is this AWS community uh, race. Uh, sorry, the deep Racer community race. So community race is one of the cool feature that we launched at, uh, at RainFan 2019. And essentially with this feature, you can organize your own private deep research competition. And with, with the community race, that means that you can invite your friends, you can invite your colleagues or wider audience by sharing the link once that you have created your competition. 
another cool feature that we have just launched this year is live race. So um, let me uh, show you how it looks like. Live race, here you go. Now, live race is a synchronous event that occur at a set date or, uh, and time. So you can have the race organizer. Uh, as a race organizer, you can have one private video which you can extend it to broadcast it to public. And if you are planning to do a live uh, deep racer race, uh, we even provide you with a playbook on how that you can do that. We also include the overlay here that you can use. Right? So with this, you can organize your own deep racer and broadcast it live. So let me share with you the link here. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, but back to the deep racer, uh, let me guide you to build your first reinforcement learning for deep racer. First that you need to know, uh, what you need to do is to click on the get started. Um, and it's on the navigation menu and you can see the diagram, right? And these are the steps that you need to follow through. If you want to have a complete understanding about reinforcement learning, you can go and click this button which it will going to take you uh, to a pop-up, a pop-up microsite uh, that um, that we designed to walk you uh, through the basic stuff. It's a very well documented um, um, information and we and I really like to encourage you to learn um, here from here as a starting point if you would like to deep, uh, deepen your understanding about reinforcement learning. Now the next step that on this page is you can start to create your your first model. However, my recommendation is to build your first vehicle in in this your garage page. Now, in this page you can configure your vehicle, and uh, the the way to do that is just just to click this button. And uh, why I really recommend you to do this first is that uh, for you to have understanding on how your reward function and hyperparameters will be affected as it is highly depend on the vehicle that you have, okay? So now I'm going to try to create one vehicle. So we can add anything here uh, just to name your vehicle. Uh, you can customize the appearance and give it a name. Uh, you can choose uh, whichever color that you want and you can also give a text if you want to. Now, this uh, the next page is quite important for you to understand. So on this page, you will be given a set of options to modify your sensors from camera to LiDAR sensors. This is the LiDAR sensors. Now, for camera, you have two options. There are monocam, um, which is the single lens and stereo cam. The single lens camera or monocam has 120 degree field of view and more suitable uh, to handle simple autonomous driving tasks. Like if you are if you are uh, going to go for a time trial competition. A stereo camera has two lenses that capture images to determine the op depth and ops of objects. The depth information from a stereo camera is valuable for the vehicle to avoid crashing into the obstacles or other vehicles in the front. So this is why a stereo camera is more suitable for object avoidance and head-to-head -head racing. However, these two stereo cam, sorry, this, this stereo cam with a two cam, two cameras, makes the training to convert more slowly. And there's also an option here, yeah, uh, for you to add more sensors. In this case, it's LiDAR sensor. A LiDAR sensor uses uh, rotating lasers to send out pulses of light. And by combining LiDAR with mono or stereo cams, you enable the host vehicle to capture information to take appropriate actions. But it will also come with a trade-off. The neural net must learn how to interpret the LiDAR data and in results, the training will take longer to converge. So, uh, the bottom line, and this is why I recommend you to build your uh, vehicle first uh, before you start uh, creating your model, is that understanding sensors for your vehicle is essential to achieve the best model performance. If you're going to race in time trial, one configuration that you can choose is that you can go with choosing the monocam, which is this camera here. 
here without the LiDAR sensor. Yeah. If you're doing head-to-head -head or object avoidance, then the task will be more complex and you will need a stereo cam and LiDAR sensors as well to help the vehicle choose appropriate action. Now you can do trial and error, check and tune based on your model's result. Okay, cool. So, um, so we have uh, covered this part. Let's go to the next part. Action space. Now we uh, frequently mention in in any of the pressure sessions about action, and that action is actually defined by the action space, which the vehicle reacts with a specific speed and steering angle. So in reinforcement learning, there are two kinds of action spaces. There are discrete and continuous action space. In deep racer, we use both discrete and continuous action space. Now for a discrete action space, the range is defined by the maximum speed and the absolute value of the maximum steering angles. So we have two components here, steering angle and also speed. Each of the components also have, um, here, have granularity. So you can try to adjust uh, each of these, right? So this is the action list. If I change uh, the steering angle granularity, you can see uh, the uh, table also change, right? And remember that the more granular you define uh, in the action space, the longer it will be to train your model and to finally converge. Uh, the other option that you can choose is the continuous action space. Uh, the continuous action space uh, allows the agents to select an action from a range of values for each state. In a continuous action space, you need to define the range of options. So the agent can pick the action from that range. And one benefit of using the continuous action space is that you can write your reward functions to incentivize speed of steering actions at specific points on a track that will optimize the performance. Now, I already reckon that at this point, you might have a question, which one do I need to choose between discrete and continuous or which one is better? And that solely depends on how you envision your reward function. Yeah. With discrete action space, you will be able to understand the impact of those actions that you have defined and use those variables based on the environment in your reward function. And in continuous action space, you can define your reward functions to pick the optimal speed and steering values from the range that you have defined. Okay, so I hope that helps you to, um, to choose between discrete and continuous uh, action space. And once that you have satisfied with the configuration for your vehicle, you can click this button and you will have your first vehicle. Okay. Now, uh, now it's time to create your model. Uh, just a reminder that uh, for anyone who is following me um, throughout this session, we are not going to train any model. Yeah, and we're going to stop at reward function. So to create a model, you can click in this button or you can also click on this page and then click the create model. Um, both methods uh, will lead you to the same page. Now, you can start by typing the uh, model name yeah, and then then you will need to choose the track, right? Uh, we can see that there are a few tracks that you can choose. Um, and if you are organizing a community race, uh, you can pick any track. Or if you are building, if you are involved in the competition, you, you can just pick the track or both similar with what you're going to race on. Yeah. And remember, uh, having the most similar track, it might maximize the odds for you to, or for your model to get best performance. So, my personal favorite is the Rain Fan 2018, which is the classic. This is this was the first um, uh, track uh, for AWS Deep Racer, so I'm going to choose this. Okay, so next, uh, what you need to do is to choose your race type. You can choose between time trial, object avoidance, or head-to-head -head racing. Now, moving on to the training algorithm. As for now, we have uh, two algorithms that Depressor uses to build the model, PPO and SSC. Uh, PPO stands for Proximal Policy Optimization and SSC stands for Soft Actor Critic. And again, like the discrete and continuous action spaces, you might be wondering what is the difference between these two? So 
I will not uh, going to like a dive deep into this algorithm, but I'm just going to give you a quick overview. If you're using a discrete or continuous action space, you can use PPO. SAC here only works in the continuous action space. Now, if at some point you dive deep into these two algorithms to get more understanding about how these two algorithms work, you will find that, that's, that the significant difference is the entropy. You don't need to worry if you're not familiar with this terminology. That is totally fine. And I just want to share a bit of why it matters. Now, to understand that, let's take a step back and understand what entropy is. Entropy is the level of uncertainty in the policy. So if your agent has low entropy, has a low entropy, yeah, so if it, yeah, so if your agent has low entropy, it means that the policy is very confident at choosing an action. PPO and SSC has a different takes on leveraging entropy. PPO use entropy regularization and SAC adding entropy to its maximization objective. So on the other hand, uh, SAC is more data efficient, but less stable compared to PPO. Now, which one is better? Well, that again depends on your strategy on, on how you structure a reward function. My recommendation is to start with PPO and then tweak the hyperparameters. And once that you are getting good at the model, you can try SAC. Okay. Okay. So at this uh, point, we're going to use PPO. Once that you have defined the algorithm, uh, the next thing that you can do is you, you can tweak the parameter, the hyperparameters. Mm, okay. So this is something that I want to take a pause for one. I got a lot of questions from developers uh, about these hyperparameters which hyperparam that they need to adjust to have a better model to win the race. Now, the truth is the default hyperparameter, they are just fine. The depressor team already configured these hyperparameters to be the most effective configuration, both for PPO and SAC. So to simply put, if you're just getting started, I don't recommend you to change any of this. But as you progress forward, yes, eventually you will need to take a look uh, into this piece. Okay. Okay. So, uh, moving on, I'm going to choose this, um, this test one, uh, and then, uh, you need to do is just to choose the vehicle, uh, and then click next. Now here's where the fun begins reward function. So reward function in deep razor is written in Python. So all of this line, uh, you, you can see here, right? Um, they are, uh, they are, uh, or written on Python tree. Now, before we dive deeper into the reward function and, and some tips and tricks, uh, let us review the anatomy of reward function. And for that, we need to go back to the slide. So this is a really basic reward function. And yeah, although I did some modification, but you can uh, find most part of this code uh, on the example. The reward, this reward function is structured to reward the agent to follow this center line. Now, uh, the input parameters are submitted as a Python dictionary. You can see it here. Yeah. And we see that, uh, here params, this is actually a dictionary. Now the next line is uh, to show us how to use the parameters here. I'm not sure if you can, I think I can do this. Oh yeah. So this is to, um, to help you understand on how that you can use the parameters. And you can see in this particular example here that we are using two of those parameters. One is track width and the other one is the distance from center. And um, yeah, and then these following lines is that is this actually the logic on how you like to incentivize your agent by structuring the reward or penalty, right? And uh, lastly, uh, in uh, and, and uh, next one is this. Uh, this line shows you on how that you can uh, craft the reward for your agent, and this one is just uh, return the flow uh, the reward back to the environment. Okay, so uh, what you need to do when you what you need to be focused on when you are crafting your reward function is that you need to focus on these three these three parts. 
you need to use the parameters that have already been provided by AWS Depressor. And then you need to define the logic. You can use this kind of like an incentivized uh, planning, like what we have on the example here. And then you can also use the combination uh, with various parameters to structure your logic. Now, uh, to see the list of all parameters uh, available for you uh, to use in the reward function, you can go to the AWS Depressor documentation. Uh, and what's really important to note here is the neural network is not making any decision based on this data, but it uses data from the sensors. And once it made its decision, then it will trigger the reward function. Now the reward function has access to all of this information. So you know everything about the state of the car. And this information is provided uh, for you so you could reward the neural network for the decision it has made. And remember, some of the variables will be available depending on which race format you choose. Uh, like for example, uh, there are a few uh, variables that you can use for head-to-head -head racing and there are a few variables that you can use for time trial. Yeah, so just to let you know that. Okay, so let's go back to our uh, console. Now, in a nutshell, uh, like a, what, what I mentioned, a reward function is the logic for how you like to reward the agent when the vehicle moves from one position to a new position. So each time it moves, it will get another reward. The design of the reward function should be like an incentive plan. Different incentive strategies could result in different behaviors. A good practice is to create a reward function from a simple scenario you don't need to have a complicated reward function at the beginning as you can start small and enhance it along the way. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples of reward function. So um, there are uh, follow the center line here, uh, the default one, uh, stay inside the two borders, uh, prevent zigzag, and also uh, stay on one lane and not crashing. And this is for object avoidance and head to head raising. Uh, so what, we, what we're going to do is just let's uh, review uh, the, the default one, which is the time trial here. Right. Now, this reward function is OK. OK, so I got a question from Mahesh, but I'm going to address it later on. Uh, thank you, Mahesh. Um, so this reward functions helps to rewarding the agent to follow the center line. And that's the idea. Uh, the function leverage two variables, uh, track width and distance from center. Both are the parameters supplied by the environment. And from there, it creates three virtual markers to identify how far away the agent from the center line. Now, seeing all of these codes might be daunting at first, especially for you who haven't done any programming yet. But bear with me, uh, let me help you to understand uh, this line. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to draw you something to help uh, you understand this reward function. And just for you to know, I'm really bad at drawing. So apology in advance if my drawing is not good. So, okay, so we're going to have this one. What we're going to do is so uh, this is the center line. Um, just pretend this is the center line. And this is a small portion of the track. Okay. Okay, so. So imagine that this is the small portion of the track with these areas here is the outside uh, area. Marker one indicates here, indicates that if the agent is around 10% of the track and with marker two indicates if the agent is around 25% of the track. And lastly, marker three indicates if the agent is around 50% of the track width. And all of these markers are relative to the center line. Logically speaking, if the agent is in marker one, um, which is the smallest area among all of these markers, we should reward the agent more. And that's what we are trying to do in this code. 
we give a better reward if they can stay close from the center line. Yeah. And uh, finally, and so let's take a look at the code. So here, you can see that we have three marker and each one of them, it gives a, a different reward if the car is closer to the center line. Right. And that means that if the if the agent is inner brown marker one, it will going to get more reward compared to the other markers. And if the um, if the agent is not within these three markers, more and that means most likely the agent is likely crash or 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 off track already. Right. So that's pretty simple, isn't it? Now, while you're building your reward function, remember that you're going to get what you incentivize and not what you intend. So that's why structuring the logic for reward uh, planning is more crucial. Uh, once again, if you'd like to know about the parameters, you can go to this um, uh, documentation page in which that you can see all the available parameters that, uh, for you to use uh, for uh, in your reward function. You can see that there's a description here and also there's a variable type. Um, so that to makes you uh, easier for you to uh, use this, um, these variables and enrich your reward function. Okay, so once that you have crafted your reward function, the next thing that you need to define is the stop conditions. So stop condition is the maximum time period that you allow DeepGraser to train the model. And if you're just getting started, um, um, I, you can skip this part. You don't need to uh, submit your model to the deep research link, especially if you just uh, uh, learning about uh, about uh, about deep research. You can skip this part. Yeah. Okay. So once that you have done, you can create the model. But we will not do that in this session. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to go back to the models. Yeah. Now. Once that you have trained the model, yeah, uh, you what you're going to see is something that looks like this. Okay, so this is an example of a reward graph of a model that I have trained for a couple of hours. The blue and the, and the red lines are indicate the average percentage completion and the green line indicates the average reward. Yeah. So a training job is good if the average reward and track completion showing trends to converge. Most of the times when you see the track completion hits 100% and if you see the average reward is on the same level, that means your model is likely to converge. And if I, if I were to interpret this graph, um, I, I know that I should extend the training time as the model haven't achieved 100% completion. Okay, and once that you have trained your model, you want to evaluate the performance of your model here. Yeah. And to do this, yeah, you can start the evaluation in the next section uh, right here. Okay, so uh, if you, if once that you're done with the evaluation, you will see the result of your performance. And you can see there's a, there's a video over here that's being streamed by Amazon Kinesis Video Stream. Okay, so just to uh, reiterate, these all are the steps that you need to create model with AWS DeepRacer. First thing is that you need to be held, uh, to build your, your first vehicle. Uh, you also need to define the action space, either it's discrete or continuous. And then you need to create your model, uh, you need to create your reward function, which is the core of the reinforcement learning. And then you need to um, define the hyperparameters and that's it, right? So uh, all in all, it's really straightforward uh, to build and train your first uh, reinforcement learning model with AWS DeepRacer. And, and I can stress this enough that you really need to craft a good reward function. And, and for that, let's switch back to our slides because I, I want to share you uh, something. So what you see on the screen is the illustration of developer's journey with DeepRacer. And this is based on my personal observation experience in having discussion with developers. So first, for those who are just getting started, they usually try the default reward functions just to get a sense on how everything works all together. Then they realize that, oh, 
a day, I need to effectively utilize their variables and the reward function actually can be printed as logs on CloudWatch or even downloaded uh, from the console page. And they start to evaluate each of the variable values. Then they will start to experiment with the variables to create their own version of reward function. When they at this stage, they will usually start to submit their model and participate in deep wrestling. And it is a common practice to learn together with their peers as uh, and they start to create the community race, uh, not only as a, as a learning group, but also to benchmark their models with their peers. Then the next step is using the log analysis tool to get more insights on the training and evaluation logs. And things just getting uh, serious with the hyperparameter tuning. And in the search of having a best model, most of the developers want to have their own control of the environment's models. The, the way they structured the reward function and all elements, and they started using SageMaker to replicate the deep reason. So one of the reason why I show you this common developer's journey in, understand, in, in, in interaction with AWS Deep Creaser is simply to give you a guidance on which area that you need to explore at first in order to fully understand the dynamics of Deep Creaser and reinforcement learning. Okay, so next we're going to review some reward functions, tips and techniques to help you improve your reward functions and have a better model. So one of the most useful parameters is the steps. Steps is the most often overlooked, but when combined with other parameter progress, it becomes a really easy way to structure the reward of your model. Uh, for getting further along the track for the same amount of time. And just to reiterate what a step is, a step is a single iteration of the loop, and this is how it works, right? And the image comes into the sensor, and as we know, this, this image is the state, and it's being passed into the neural network. And then the neural network makes its decision. It chooses an action and performs the uh, respective action. And then your reward function is triggered and performs the logic and return the reward. And each time the loop runs about 15 times per second, that is called as a single step, okay? And I know that we are uh, we are almost in one hour, so I just want to skip into a couple of things that I would like to emphasize here. And the other thing, uh, the other tips that I want to share with you is to use the log analysis tool. So the log analysis tool is um, um, is the is a Jupyter notebook uh, that you can use to analyze the your deep pressure performance based on the log. So if you see, um, if you see here that you can actually download the logs, but in the Jupyter notebook, it gives you more seamless integration by automatically integrating your logs and also giving you a really useful charts and feel like a heat maps, like what I have here. I have an example. Yeah. So like, yeah, like, uh, sorry, this one. Yeah, so you can have a heat maps. You can also see the waypoints in the log analysis tool. So what I really suggest is that if you already uh, built your first reward function with AWS Deep Reserve, the next step that I will recommend you is to try the log analysis. Okay. So yeah, I think that's all that I have for today. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining me, and probably that we have a couple of minutes to answer some of the questions. Yeah, so yeah, so we have one question from Mahes and I promise you that I'm going to address it. So so deep research, the question is that uh if I uh can rephrase it, is that is the deep research is only practical use uh use only in grazing? So the idea is not about the deep razor itself, Mahesh. Um, so the, the idea is that the deep razors leverage the reinforcement learning that uh, it, it, and this reinforcement learning, it helps us to create a model that could learn based on the interaction with the environment. Yeah. So the implementation of reinforcement learning, it could be, in, it could be implemented in various industry. 
like for example in the racing we can use it to uh, power the deep racer but we can also use the reinforcement learning in robotics right which the robot will uh, will do trial and error to learn from the interaction with the environment with the specific environment and get the rewards or get the penalty right so I can say that there's so many use cases that we can unlock by implementing reinforcement learning. We can probably the something that I can see in the for, uh, in the future is that how we can have a system that automatically detects if it's a fraud, uh, like in, in in the in the banking industry or financial industry, whether it's a fraud uh, or not, uh, is a fraud transaction or not, right? So. Um, the bottom line is that reinforcement learning is really useful if you have a specific problems with an, with an environment and that you need to build a model to take an action based on the interactions and the model itself, it can learn based on the actions that it produced towards the environment. I hope that answers your questions. Okay. So I think that's the only question that we have for today's session. I'm going to return the mic back to who we have, who have you here to the organizer sure yeah yeah uh so indeed it was a really great session donny uh i myself learned a lot of it surely okay. would implement it and you know participate in the upcoming sections uh, sessions about it uh other than this uh i have uh, on behalf of all AWS user group Dehradun would like to thank you for taking out so much uh, your precious time and delivering such a great and insightful session. Obviously our audience would love it and we hope to see you again <laughs> and delivering more of Definitely. such in great sessions. <laughs> surely, surely. Also, uh, thank you each and everyone who just attended the session and I hope you gained a lot of knowledge about it and would implement themselves and you know build your own model and participate in the upcoming uh, competitions also please do subscribe to donny's uh, youtube session and do follow us on aws user group uh, social media channels uh, we have a meter playing slack uh, channel as well we keep updating it about various upcoming sessions and various opportunities offered by aws so this was all from all side uh, all our side and thank you so much donny again uh, for catching up with us and giving us such a great insight of uh, what deep racer is all about thank you so much this has been a privilege for me um thank you so much uh user group teradun stay safe and see you next time okay bye, -bye everyone have a nice day